All right, so now that we've got Packer installed, I'm going to create a directory to store all of our source code. And don't worry guys, I'll make sure to upload this to a GitHub repository. And I'm gonna open this folder up within VS Code. That's gonna be my text editor of choice. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is, um, you know, we're gonna run through a couple of example scenarios. And I wanna make sure that you guys have access to the code for each one of these scenarios. So I'm going to break it out into different subfolders and each scenario will have its own folder. So um, I'll create the first one. I'm just gonna call this project one, even though it's not even a project, we're gonna be doing a simple scenario, a simple example scenario. Um, but you know, just know that everything's going to be uh, updated chronologically. So you know, the first example that I give is gonna be in project one, the second one is going to be in project two. Now Packer, um, for its configuration files, it uses a JSON format, which I'm sure you guys are already pretty familiar with. So I'm gonna create a new file and I'm just gonna call this example.json. So this is going to contain all the configurations that Packer needs. Now, now what I want you guys to do is open up the Packer documentation. Uh, this is always going to be your main reference point. Uh, they do a pretty good job. I think HashiCorp does a great job overall across all of their um, different apps when it comes to documenting them and how to use them. Uh, and so in the documentation, I wanna kind of quickly go over the different components that make up a Packer config. And there's really three building blocks to a Packer config. And those are gonna be builders, provisioners, and post processors. And what we're gonna do is we're going to start off by taking a look at builders. Uh, and so we'll create an image just using builders. And then um, we'll, and then in the next project, we'll add in provisioners just so that you guys can see what each one of these do on a step-by-step -step basis. And then finally, we'll have a final project where we can add in the post processor as well. And so hopefully at that point, you guys can really understand what each one of these does and figure out how you want to set up your configs when you're creating an image for yourself. So let's take a look at builders real quick. And if we go over the overview, it's going to, ex it's going to explain what builders are. And uh, so this is kind of the main component, um, but builders are ultimately responsible for uh, creating a machine and generating an image from that machine across various platforms. And uh, if you take a look at the different platforms that Packer supports, uh, you know, they support a ton of platforms, um, all of the major cloud providers. So Amazon, Azure, uh, I'm sure we've got Google Cloud somewhere in here, wherever that is, Google Cloud. Uh, but you can see they support a ton of other platforms. So DigitalOcean, they support Docker, Hyper-V. So it's not just cloud providers. You can do local Hyper-V, uh, VMware, VirtualBox, right? So they, they have a ton of support. Um, but we're going to be focusing mainly on AWS and a little bit of Azure. Um, but you'll see that all of the principles that I uh, go over in this video, they're going to apply to across all of the different providers. There'll just be a couple of different config options that you may need to pass in. To kick things off, we're going to create our very own AWS AMI. And since we're working with Amazon, uh, select the Amazon tab right here, and you'll see that there's a couple of different builders for Amazon. So we've got one just for plain old EC2 instances. We've got one for EBS backed instances. So we're gonna select this one. This is going to allow us to create an AMI for an EBS backed EC2 instance. Uh, so this is going to contain all of the documentation for how to work with this. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the different configs that you need. So this is once again, a JSON file. So let's get our curly braces. And the first thing we have to do is we have to pass in the builder that we're gonna use. And Packer actually allows us to pass in multiple builders. So that's why uh, this option or this config option is called builders. And we actually have to pass an array. Uh, and so once again, right, we can actually use multiple builders. So if we wanted to create an identical image across AWS, Azure, and GCP, uh, we could actually configure three different builders in this config so that we could have, you know, a Ubuntu image with certain packages installed um, that's identical across the three different cloud providers. Uh, and so we're only going to be using one. So let's just specify the Amazon EBS builder. So what we have to do is type and so this is gonna be the name of the builder and it's gonna be called Amazon-EBS. All right, and since uh, Packer needs to be able to connect to our AWS account to actually create an EC2 instance so that it can then create an image from that EC2 instance, it obviously needs access to our AWS environment. So we're gonna to have to pass in some credentials. And if we take a look at the documentation um, under, uh, there should be an authentication section, access configuration. 
there's three different options that we have to pass in. There's going to be access key, region key, and secret key. Uh, so if you don't know how to get this data, um, I'll show you guys how to do that. So go to your AWS management console and select your account name and select on security credentials. And under here, select access keys. And so I've got a couple of access keys. You may not have that if you haven't set this up. Um, but what I can do is I'll, I'll just walk you through how to do that. So I'm going to delete my current access keys. And I'm going to create a new access key. And when you do that, you want to click on this button right here to see your current access keys. Because uh, once you see them, uh, and once you close out this window, you won't be able to see them again. So I recommend you actually download this file so that you have it and then just store it someplace safe. And so we've got our access key and we've got our secret access key. So what we can do is I can just copy that and we're going to pass in the access key property. And then we need to pass in our secret key as well. And then finally, we're going to have to give our region uh, and so I'm going to use the U.S. East one. That's my default region. If you guys want to use a different region, pick whichever one's closest to you. Or if you want to make sure that everything kind of works as you follow along, then just go ahead and use U.S. East one. Okay, so this is all we need from a authentication perspective when it comes to logging into our AWS account. And I'm sure you guys are probably thinking the same thing, right? This, um, you know, it's probably against best practices to just write your, you know, access keys or write into your configs, right? So if if you ever want to uh, save your configs in a GitHub repository, well, now all of your passwords and credentials are stored in there as well, and that's not quite secure. And there's actually a couple of different ways of making this a little bit more secure so that we don't just hard code our credentials into our configs. I'm going to hold off on talking about those methods for now. I want to just start off with the basics, so we're going to hard code them in for now, but I promise you guys we'll have a dedicated section to um, setting up a more secure way of authenticating with AWS. There's couple of different options, right? We can always use environment variables uh, and things like that. Uh, so, you know, we'll we'll cover this all in the future, um, but I just want to keep things simple. I don't want to overcomplicate things at first. All right, so now that we've got our authentication set up, let's take a look at all the other configs that are necessary for this specific builder. And I'm going to scroll up to the top. And under the AMI configuration, it says that there's one property that's absolutely required, and that's AMI underscore name. So, um, what this property is used for is when we create a new image, a new AMI, we need to give it a name so that, you know, we know which one we just created. Uh, so let's pass that in. And I'm just going to call this, you know, my uh, first AMI. Uh, and, you know, there's obviously other properties we can pass in, like a description and, and things like that. But, you know, let's keep things simple. Uh, let's just make sure we cover all of the required options. So we've got access finished. And then uh, we want to go down to run configuration. There's two different properties. So there's source AMI and instance type. So the source AMI is, well, we have to give Packer a AMI that, you know, we kind of want to modify, right? So we have to give it access to, a to an AMI that we want to tweak so that we can kind of use it as a base template for our new AMI. And so we can use any existing AMI. It can be a private AMI that you've created through Packer. It can be one of the default AMIs that's within the uh, AWS uh, AMI marketplace. Uh, and so let's grab one real quick. And so we can go under services and EC2. If you select running instances, and let's just launch a new instance. And so this is gonna show us all of the different AMIs. And I'm just going to grab the plain old Amazon Linux 2 AMI, a very simple AMI. Uh, and so we can just copy this. And I recommend that you guys uh, don't copy what you see on my screen. Instead, I want you to go to this page and copy whatever value it shows because yours may be different depending on what your region is. And I think sometimes the AMI values can also change. So uh, don't just copy what you see on my screen. So we'll copy that. Let's go back to our configs. And let's give it the source underscore AMI. Then the next thing that we have to do is we have to specify an instance type. And, you know, this kind of confused me at first because I didn't understand why we needed to give it an instance type. We're not trying to create an EC2 instance. We want to create an AMI. And, well, 
the way that we create an AMI or the way that Packer creates an AMI is it actually deploys an EC2 instance. It uh, then configures that EC2 instances with all the custom configs that you want. And then it creates an AMI from that EC2 instance. So it does technically have to deploy an EC2 instance to be able to create an AMI, but Packer will automatically destroy that EC2 instance once that AMI is configured. So it's just a temporary uh, instance. And so we're gonna use the smallest, cheapest instance type, which is going to be the T2 micro. Here we can do instance underscore type and then pass in t2.micro. And as I stated before, and as I just stated, right, so Packer is going to have to create an EC2 instance to log in, configure it, to then create an AMI. But we also have to tell Packer what are the credentials to log in to that EC2 instance. So here I'm going to pass in a SSH username. And this is going to be the default username that AWS uses uh, for this specific AMI, which is always EC2-user. However, I know that uh, under certain AMIs, the default username is um, uh, Ubuntu. If you're using like an Ubuntu AMI, that's gonna be the default user. So uh, in this case, if you're following along with me, go ahead and just type in EC2-user. Uh, but if you're using an Ubuntu VM, then you wanna set the user uh, to be Ubuntu. And this is just to make sure that it knows what to log in as because it needs to be able to connect into it to make those necessary config changes. Okay, so this is all of the configs that we need uh, for our builder. There's obviously plenty of other extra options we can pass in depending on what we're looking for, um, but this is the base configuration that we need. So right now, we can create a custom AMI from this source AMI. And let's actually go ahead and do that. So we're going to create our first AMI. And let's do a, I'm gonna open up my integrated terminal. Um, if you're not using VS Code or you don't have an integrated terminal, that's okay, just open up uh, the command line uh, for whatever operating system you're using. And I'm gonna to navigate to that project one folder. And here to actually run this config or create our AMI, we do packer build and then example.json, right? So whatever your file name is. And I want you to notice what's happening. It, it prints out some detailed output. So uh, the main thing I wanna focus on is that, look at this, it's launching an EC2 instance for us. So if we go to our AWS console and select EC2 and go into running instances, you can see that we have an EC2 instance called Packer Builder. So this is the one that Packer creates for us. It's that T2 micro, so that's the option that we provided. And so this is the EC2 instance that Packer creates so that it can then generate an AMI image from. So it's going to create this. Once it loads up, it's going to SSH into it. It's going to pass in whatever configs uh, we specified, which at the moment we didn't actually give it any configs. So we're kind of making almost a pointless AMI because all we're doing is we're taking an AMI, deploying it as an EC2 instance, and then creating a brand new AMI. So this AMI that we're about to create is identical to that default AMI that we're using. So. Uh, you know, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, in the next section, we'll obviously figure out how to add custom configs, uh, deploy with extra packages and things like that. Um, but you can see uh, it looks like it's already stopping it. So if you take a look at the output, uh, you can see it's waiting for an SSH uh, session to be available. It'll connect. Uh, at that point, it'll pass any specific configs. And then once that's done, it's going to stop the instance and then it's going to create an AMI from that stopped instance. And then once that's done, it's going to then delete the EC2 instance. So right now it's still creating that AMI. And so I'm gonna pause this video for now uh, and I'll touch base with you guys once that's complete. All right, so we can see that the AMI was completed. And so now Packer is trying to delete uh, the EC2 instance. So it's terminating the EC2 instance it's cleaning up any extra volumes uh, and just making sure it deletes all of the unnecessary stuff that it temporarily created. Now, if we go back, so we can see this is in a, well, actually let's refresh it. So it's now in a terminated state. So eventually AWS will clean this out. Um, but if we go to AMIs, we can see our very first AMI, right? And we gave it a name of my first AMI. And so this is the AMI. You've created your first custom AMI. And if you go to instances, we can actually create a new EC2 instance 
using that AMI. So if we go under my, my AMIs, we can see this uh, AMI. But once again, guys, keep in mind that, you know, we didn't actually do anything special or custom. We didn't tweak the AMI. Um, I just wanted to show you guys how to create an AMI. Um, but in the next section, we're going to start incorporating provisioners. So provisioners is what ultimately allows us to modify and make changes to these images so that we have custom images that will already have all of the necessary packages and configs that we need. Uh, and guys, keep... And guys, keep in mind, if you have any custom images on AWS, uh, it will incur a recurring cost. I'm not sure what the exact cost is. It's very little, but uh, if you're trying to keep things, you know, as close to free as possible, if you're following along, just make sure to delete these AMIs as you go along. And uh, if you aren't aware on how to actually delete an AMI, it's pretty easy. Let's just go back. We want to select AMIs. Select this AMI, and then we can just right-click, or we can go under Actions and select deregister. So that's the equivalent of deleting. All right, and so there we go. We've cleaned out our AMI. And if we go back to instances, let's just double check to see. Yep, it's already in a terminated state. So um, at this point, you should not be uh, accruing any extra costs. 